Hi, uh, this is part three of MK1 Mechanics. And today I'm going to add steel weight rings to this yo-yo design. So let's take a look at uh, where we're going to place the ring uh, in this uh, sketch of the aluminum section. Uh, there is a, a spot along the rim. Let me go ahead and draw a line here. Uh, there we go. And this is roughly where uh, the steel ring is going to be. And this is going to be uh, pressed in from the inside direction. And this here is will be the, the backstop. Uh, so uh, to get this to work in FreeCAD, I actually need to clip this section out. I'm going to use the, the trim tool. And... Uh, that is up here, and I'm going to go click on this arc, and here. All right, uh, so now that has been removed, and I'm going to redraw that arc as uh, construction geometry. So construction geometry uh, still exists uh, in the, the drawing and can be used for constraints and dimensions, but it will not be exported as part of the uh, file that get eventually gets sent uh, to a machine shop. So I have um, I have this point here and I need to uh, move this line so that it contacts that. So let me... That's not quite what I want. All right, uh, so we have that here, and this is uh, uh, constrained to uh, touch uh, this outer diameter. And I'm going to redraw that point that'll sit at the apex. Uh, and here we go. Uh, whoops. This will be vertically constrained to that point and horizontally constrained to be 3.7 away from uh, the rim face there. Uh, and that looks pretty good. Uh, there are a couple things that I need to do uh, before I start drawing the steel ring in. Uh, the most important one is to fill it this edge here. Uh, if I fill it that later, I'm going to run into some uh, topological issues. Uh, so let me just give this a 0.25. There we go. Okay, we'll come back and revisit this a little bit later, but this is good enough to uh, start drawing the rim. Our yo-yo looks really funky right now, as most uh, bimetals do when you're only looking at the aluminum bit. Uh, so I'm going to go, no, I'm in the sketcher workbench, I'm going to make a new sketch on the XY plane. And uh, this sketch is going to, uh, it needs to reference uh, some of the lines up here. I need to turn the lines back on, V7. I turn off the 3D parts and then hop back into the sketch. So uh, there is a tool here, the external uh, geometry action. Uh, and that will bring a reference uh, to that other sketch into this one. Uh, there's three bits that we need, uh, the general like arc of the yo-yo and then these two flat uh, parts. 
so that we can have our uh, our ring kind of like uh, match each of those. So it's going to have the same radius uh, as that. And uh, let me draw the, the, the inside corner. And add a fillet here as well. And I will vertically constrain th those two points and horizontally constrain those two. Uh, and the last thing is I need to make the center of those two arcs coincide. And now there is a big smooth sweep along all that. Uh, so let's go ahead and close this and uh, look at our yo-yo. Uh, so I need to revolve this sketch. Let me name this steel ring. And hop over to the part workbench to do that. Uh, revolve on the x-axis and hit OK. Now I'm going to name this to steel 8.0 so the density can get picked up by uh, my macro. And uh, we can see the ring currently has 12 and a half grams. Uh, the yo is now 67 grams uh, assembled. Uh, let me mirror this so we can just see how it looks visually at uh, the mirror tool here. Uh, on the YZ plane, YZ being this the strength plane of the yo, -yo in this case. Uh, all right, so now we have our steel. Uh, the, the shape and size of this bit of steel is completely determined by uh, the references uh, to the guts here. Uh, so if, if we move this, the uh, steel shape will become correspondingly uh, larger automatically. So uh, let's add a dimension here. That will be the, the thickness of the aluminum that the steel is getting pressed into. Um, and uh, that between that and the, the set thickness of the rim here, uh, this is called the rim flat, that kind of uh, will indicate how thick this piece is. Uh, the other part we can control is how far along uh, this uh, lives from the rim. Uh, I do want to constrain that, but I need to. I want to add a fillet here first. So this will be uh, 0.25, and I'll just go ahead and make those touch. There we go. I want to add a fillet over here as well. So these are these are parts that the that your hand will touch. I'll just set that to one and make those touch. All right. OK. Uh, we can see here the these edges are looking rounder. Uh, the steel still has a sharp point there. So uh, let's go update that in the uh, drawing here. Uh, so take the fillet tool, fill it that, uh, fill it this, set this to 0.1, and set this to 0.25. All right, now it's fully constrained again. You can see that it's all green. The solver has a stable solution there. Uh, and uh, you can see it looks uh, much smoother with those fillets added is very good. So uh, let's weigh it again, 68 grams. That's a lot. Uh, so one nice thing about naming the constraints, I have that rim flat part uh, on the edge here. It's uh, this piece that is uh, 0.6 millimeters long. I can actually adjust that uh, in the sketch constraints panel over here. I'm going to set it to 0.3 uh, 
and you can see it update uh, in real time. And if I measure the yo-yo again, uh, it's already down to 62 grams just by making that adjustment, which is uh, quite a lot. Uh, and you can see the ring is smaller. Uh, it's The ring is 10 and a half grams now, just about. Um, and this ends up being pretty lightweight. I'll probably go back and adjust that a little bit more later. Uh, but another thing I want to look at is this cup. Uh, so one thing on the diffraction is this section and this section have close to the same uh, distance between their inner and outer edges. And in this yo, -yo because it's it's organic and this outer part has a much larger diameter uh, that doesn't quite look right. Uh, so I want to go in here and update this. Uh, let's do a 12.5 uh, and that looks a little bit better, maybe 12.4 hop out. There we go. I think that does it. Those look these, those look like they're about the same size now. Um, all right. Uh, however, when I do that, I do need to make sure that the distance between these two arcs is uh, not too small, or else the yo-yo will have some problems being machined. So uh, n for perpendicular, n for perpendicular. Let's set a dimension on here. Uh, I'm just going to use a reference. Uh, so uh, if a dimension is a reference, it's allowed to change. It just updates in real time uh, to show me uh, how it's changing. So I want that to be about 1.2 uh, to give it enough uh, space. And the oh, these are no longer tangent. Let's fix that. Very cool. And uh, I can actually make this move have a uh, slide up as a whole if I increase the distance of this second gap. If I make it 4.6, it ends up having to like slide up the arc like that. Um, all right, so that is 1.21, 1.25. The more distance there is there, the safer the design is. Uh, I want to, I don't want that part to be a problem. Uh, that would be very unfortunate. I could also make, move this ring, uh, this stepped part of the cup down, uh, but that I'm starting from that point and trying to make everything else work around it. So uh, let's keep it like that. Oh, let's look in the schmove. That is a very uh, distinct and large groove here, which looks pretty good, I think. Uh, I can turn the bearing back on. And let's color these steel rings real quick. I'm going to give it the default uh, steel look in uh, FreeCAD steel, which makes them look shiny and black, which might be a cool color for this yo-yo. I actually had a hatchet plus in this color way. It looked looked pretty good. All right, uh, so let's print out the specs. Uh, 61.87. I think this means that we can actually uh, make the flat part of the rim a little bit bigger. All right, uh, 0.35 millimeters, uh, print out the specs, uh, six, about 63 grams now. Uh, oh yeah, there's another thing that I can add a dimension to. So the distance from this backstop to the rim face, uh, I can add a dimension there, let's say 1.5. So that this will make the ring uh, larger as well. Uh, from from the standpoint of how far across, uh, how wide the whole ring is. Uh, so now that small change increased the ring by about a gram, and that brings the, the assembled weight up to 63.8.
Um, it's definitely a question here of how close to the rim I want the the ring to go. I think 1.5 is is fine. Um, I think the only thing I might be concerned about is if uh, this part here, if you can feel that in your hand uh, on a hard catch. I'm hoping not. Uh, I want to keep this ring as, as broad as possible. Uh, I'm going to bump up the size of the rim flat just a little bit. I want to get it closer to uh, 64 grams. Uh, that's pretty good, 63.91. And let's take a look at it uh, with the cutaway view. Uh, this cutaway view is a macro that I wrote that is available on my GitHub. Uh, there's a link in the description. And this is how our design looks like right now. So one thing I like about this is how the schmoove kind of like interacts with the uh, uh, cup design and uh, there is like a big chunk of aluminum here but like as soon as it gets to this like mid outer part it becomes pretty efficient uh, as the the weight is is distributed until you get up to the the rim and then you have that, that heavy steel ring there of course uh, so the hope is that this won't feel too dense uh, and that it'll perform uh, quite well given its uh, size and general shape uh, kind of like a, a, a performance uh, organic, but with like a finger spin hub to then remove some of the performance back into to center weight. Uh, but there we go. Uh, next time, uh, I'm going to uh, take us through the process of uh, exporting this uh, for use in Blender and then rendering a product visualization, uh, which is a, a fun process. And then it starts looking really good. So I can't wait to show you that. Bye.